Imperial Base Camp Captain Sin Imperial City Gates Imperial Arena Black Leopard School Golden Way Persian Square Uh, we got a note. A carefully folded piece of paper given to you by Princess Lian. The note reads, Meet me in the pavilion at the entrance of the scholar's court. What a wondrous flyer you have. You don't see any of that design about the city. Since they became more common among the nobles, flyers have been fascinating to me. Allow me to officially welcome you to the Imperial City. I am Bai, the Outcrier, and I am here to direct you around our illustrious capital if you have any questions at all. It would be an honor to say that I aided someone who was greeted by Princess Sun Lian herself. Tell me about the layer, layout of the city. There are several districts within easy walking distance. This area is the market district, and it is filled with all sorts of merchants and traffic. If you cross the waterway and turn left, you will soon come to the Gate of the Golden Way, a rich and luxurious place. The Golden Way is connected to both the Scholar's Garden at its far end and the Necropolis, though no one would venture into those burial grounds without good reason. Okay, places of the Golden Way. The Scholar's Garden is a wonder to behold. It is decorated with rocks taken from the Valley of Sprightly Stones. The finest minds in the Empire congregate in the garden. If you have a taste for history, the Necropolis is accessible from the Golden Way as well. A city of the dead, the Necropolis is filled with tombs of rich and poor alike. About the immediate area. Just over there is the Imperial Arena where you can test your skills in the finest competition in the land, or grab a drink at the heart of the Empire Tavern within. Arena. Sounds good. Out by the waterway, you can find the city gates and all manner of merchants hawking their wares. There's also a path off the market district that leads up to the Black Leopard School, home to an ancient order that studies the ways of combat. Was there something... Anything happening in the city... There's almost always something happening in the city. There's Captain Sen, of course, standing guard at the gates out of the city. Word has it the captain has some bounties. Rich rewards for those who can track down some wanted criminals. Anything else? You must know about the Imperial Arena. Kui, the promoter, is always looking for skilled fighters to participate in his matches. It's this huge building right here. There's word from the Scholar's Garden that some strange outlander has taken up residence there, causing quite the ruckus, as barbarians typically do. There's a rumor floating around that the Black Leopard School has been having some difficulties recently. Feuding masters, that sort of thing. The Black Leopard School lies across the waterway and up the grassy path, if you're curious. Word has it there's going to be a new play happening sometime soon in the Golden Way District, over at the large pagoda on the left side of the road. It might not be ready to start yet, but it's certainly worth keeping an eye out for. Okay, it seems like a huge nexus for minor and larger quests. That's all I... A pleasure. Hmm... <sighs> Not sure if we should just collect as much as we can and uh, complete them later, or go after some targets and try to complete them. Oh, maybe we should talk to. Always happy to help. Ah, okay. Tell me what you have on your mind. I haven't been to the Imperial City in a while. I traveled here some time ago in my hunt for Gao. In fact, this is where the hunt began. 
I've come full circle, and I think it's time to let go of the past and look forward. We have exciting things ahead of us. Mm, No shame in dwelling on the past. Actually, there is. I would disagree. Nothing you can do about it. The thought of all these nobles and their fat purses is making you giddy. There won't be much time for that sort of diversion, but I can't help see the potential. In my heart, I know my daughter rests as easily as any spirit now. Whatever happens, I have that. And if we succeed, I know she finds peace. If I could go back, I don't know if I would. I'm a different man now, and while I treasure the past, I look forward to the future with the same warmth. Is there something specific you're looking forward to? Besides seeing what trouble you get yourself into next, you mean. I'm excited to be back in the city. It feels like we're one step closer to our goal, but you know that better than anyone. You brought us to this point after all. Who else could have gathered this crew or found such a quick way out of Tien's landing? Don't discount yourself or the others. How do you manage that kind of humility? Some sort of special training? Just take the time to appreciate those who are with me. And there you have it. A simple answer is usually the best. Regardless, we have an empire to shake up. Let's go see how much trouble we can cause. I don't know about you, but if a member of the Imperial family were leaving me gifts, I'd be mighty curious to learn more. Then again, the Scholar's Garden is full of more hot air than some flyers, so I can understand your reluctance to rush there. Might be a good idea to go there first. I was just thinking that we should keep at finding a way to the Imperial Palace. It's not that I don't want to talk, but I know time is... I'd be more comfortable if we made some more progress towards... Ah, the Imperial City. I'd always heard how impressive it was. Stories didn't do it justice. This is all so much to absorb. I would appreciate your counsel if you... Do you wish? I don't mean to distract you. I just wanted someone familiar around me for a moment, if only to reassure me that we are still in the Empire I thought I knew. I have long dreamed of reaching the Imperial City, but now that I have, under these circumstances, I am more overwhelmed than ever. Mm. Yeah, we're a long way from home. But that's what is bothering me. We can't be a long way from home because our home is gone. I can no longer say that what I see is strange or foreign because I have lost what I would have compared it to. I am the one out of place now. Hmm. You are alienating yourself before anyone else has a chance to. I suppose that is a reflex of mine. I cannot be excluded if I don't belong to begin with. That is why I did not participate much while at the school. 
As a child, I was marked by ill omens, apparently named for them. The people in Two Rivers were polite, but many did not hide the discomfort I caused them. I was watched, studied. If someone's ox died within a season of me bumping my head, it was somehow my fault, and I was treated like a pariah. How do you deal with being able to sense the spirit world when people make such absurd conclusions? People fear what they don't understand. Accept that. I... I cannot change who I am, I know. Perhaps I just have to let all of that go. It will not be easy. But I do feel that you have given me a strength I did not have before. I very much appreciate your support. We should continue this discussion later. I have much to think about, and our work here has only just begun. The Imperial City. I never dreamed I would reach it. I'll... Mm. What do you think about what's been happening? We just have to keep going. That's all. I can't believe my luck. I arrive home after being lost, only to find that my wife has gone off to visit relatives. Yeah, I thought you'd be happy. I am very happy indeed. Instead of dying upon my return home, I am free. Until she returns, of course. Why did you become a bond master if you were a master fighter? You're beginning to sound like my wife. Where were you last night? Why were you talking to that woman? Why do you smell like a goat? Always with the question. As I mentioned earlier, after becoming tournament champion for the second time, I was forced to marry my sponsor's nubile niece. She is the reason I no longer fight. My disapproving dove did not care for my drinking, or for my friends, or my fighting, or my friends fighting. She believed I should settle down, be more respectable. Yeah, oh, you need to learn how to stand up for yourself. At first I ignored her rebukes and continued fighting, but I soon learned that she was not a woman to be crossed. Prior to one fight, my duplicitous daisy drugged my wine. I don't remember much of what happened next, which is fortunate. From what I hear, it wasn't very pretty. Ouch. I spent the next several months under the tender ministrations of my doting wife. Needless to say, when I was well enough to walk again, I was more than happy to settle down. As to why I became a bondmaster, well, it's a hard, thankless job that keeps me very, very busy. Very busy. We made it this far. How hard can it be from here? From what I've seen, you're more than capable of handling anything we're likely to encounter. As you say, I will be here scrubbing your pots until you call upon me again. You yeah, don't bitch about it, it's your choice. Impact who? What? What do you want? I don't think he's a good, cho good choice to go out here. Might get into trouble. Too much talking and thinking can be dangerous, I should know. I remember one cold winter I took a job clearing rats from a local monastery. I was supposed to make sure the pests stayed out of the sacred pools, but hunting rats one at a time is boring work. So I had an idea, a way to catch them all at once. I convinced the monks to give me some of their sacred wine, and I filled the sacred pools. I figured if I could get the rats drunk, they'd be so much easier to catch.
Were the rats the only ones who got drunk? Nothing happened at first, so I helped myself to the wine. I passed out before the rats came. In the middle of the night, I was woken up by screaming monks and fiery explosions. It was just the rats. The poor furry buggers were just trying to get warm near the monks' fires after their swim in the wine. Not a good combination. Uh, what happened to the monastery? The monks wanted me gone. I might have deserved the blame. But the abbot insisted it was a sign from the gods and closed the monastery. See what happens when you think too much? It's by far the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Whatever. There is something here. Some evil thing has happened here. It beats on my mind and the Guardian, he can't hold it back. You can't stop me from being here. I may not be able to leave, but I can talk. And see. I see you, mortal. I've been watching you. You must be the other. Ha! I am Yasen, the other of whom Chai Ka and this girl speak. They have suppressed me ever since we inhabited this body. But this place is different. The evil around me has given me strength, for now at least, and has opened potential doors. I don't claim to goodness, mortal. I hate your kind. But we can work together. If you help me, I shall help you. And I'll be much more valuable than the Guardian. I don't doubt that. He's fairly useless. What about her? Bah! Who cares about her? She's just another insect. This is about what I can offer you when the time comes. What? No! Chaika! You won't make me go! No! Woe, Oka, Wunir, Inatir, Nofun, Ponir, Shakshir, Woe, Seer, Nikon, Pak. You stay below, Yazen. You won't harm this girl or this world. And you, Spirit Monk, avoid him for the sake of this girl. Don't let him out. I'm sorry. They were fighting again. I'll be alright. Soon? Just. Just give me time and I'll be alright. Next to be you, girl. What do you- This place is evil. I don't like it here. The people, they're hurting too. A black cloud hangs over this place. Please, don't leave me behind here. Not alone. Is there anything else you want? Are you all right with the demons inside you? They don't come out very much. The guardian protects me and keeps the other inside. When the other tries to get out, it feels like my head is going to tear itself apart. It's been very hard on you. Yes, but the guardian has always been with me, and I trust him. The other one has been there too, but smaller. They won't say why. They say we have to be with you now. Wasoki Pari Nokasisa is son good now a patia ye ni ook. Why did you choose her? Ukir Oki Yir Wokut Thithir Sunurk. 
The amulet you carry had been hidden in the village by the last of the spread monks, and the whole area blooded. Those remaining behind died, and it was lost forever. But the dam had opened again and the water receded. I am bound to protect this amulet, but to exist in this world, balance is needed. With good, evil. With life, death. Of those who died there, I chose this one as my host. She was reborn through my power, and I within her. But balance requires that my heavenly presence have an opposite. So she's dead. We needed a host, and she was there. I did not expect balance to require that both I and Yazen be within her. It's almost too much for her to bear. We are both here inside her, but Yazen is different. He cares nothing for the amulet or the girl, and will gladly sacrifice her to escape. Ha! You care too much for this whelp. Stay inside. Do not mention these things to Wildflower Spirit Monk. She is only dimly aware of her past, and this knowledge would harm her further. Sucks be her. I trust your plans go well, despite the dangers you face and inflict. Is there something I can do for you? I just want to talk about what the Inquisitor Lim said about you. That is... an old wound. My departure from the Lotus Assassins was not gentle for either side. My immediate companions, those who were my brothers, fell by my hand. Lim was not among them. He would have died if he was. I was labeled as the one who deserted and I am occasionally recognized. The result is always the same. Another death, more blood spilled. Such a waste for a hatred they cannot even understand. Mm, must be difficult to regret the deaths of so many. Regret? I have no regret for killing anyone who challenged me of their own will. Death is a measurable cost of your actions. Some earn it sooner than others. Strength is the way of things, and death is the end. Or should be. Some do not respect either. They have enough of one to defy the other. Why did you leave then? Why do you hate them so much? There is a place for the Enforcer. The man or woman who brings death to those who have earned or otherwise deserve it. I consider that to be an honest calling. I did some harsh things while with the Lotus Assassins, but they no longer follow a path I recognize. They are a mirror of death's hand, and he embodies corruption. You will see as you get close to him. He draws out the worst in everyone and displays it for all to see. I see nothing in what they do that would scare off a killer like you. Ignorance does not make truth go away. It only hides it. Perhaps we will talk again when I see more of where your path will lead. For now, you should continue your search for- Hmm. Where are your feelings on the Imperial City? How powerful are the Lotus Assassins here? They are as powerful as fear allows them to be. Not the specific information you are looking for, I'm sure, but you did ask about my feelings. If their tactics have not changed, 
Everyone fears them as children fear the shadows, never knowing what might come. They sound more like outlaws than an arm of the Emperor. They are not outlaws. Their orders come from Death's hand and he is the will of the Emperor. At least, that is how it was meant to be. Pardon my outburst. Every act of the Assassins has the approval of the Emperor. We were supposed to reflect his glory. That is why some actions should never have been ordered. They're referring to the incident that prompted your exit. The Lotus Assassins were once the Order of the Lotus under Prince Ken, spiritual advisor to the Emperor. During and after the attack on Dirge, changes were made. As flames seared the sky, enemies of the Emperor faced a new threat, Death's Hand. He assumed command of our Order and we began silencing people. Some were killed only to serve as warnings, others... Others had done nothing except be near his enemies. You were ordered to kill innocents. Why even consider it? I am no stranger to death. That alone is not enough to disturb me. But I see only weakness in targeting innocents, peripheral to the real enemy. Weakness suggests losing the right to rule. Can you see how that shook my faith in the Empire? You seem to see why I had concerns. Perhaps you might understand. I have not said everything, and I have not yet decided if I will. But I see something in you that may set things right. We will see. For now, what else do you need? Current situation. I think it's unwise to trust the Emperor's daughter. She acts without regard for her station, but she is a slave to it like we all are. What other truths might she have missed? She may have good information for you, but I suspect she has her own agenda. Be careful. No oh, shit. She seems to... want... She seems to want to despise her position. He was disappointed I treated her like I should. She definitely at least... She clearly enjoys uh, being free of her position. As the silver fox. Goodbye. Hmm. What exactly does this bastard do for us? Dual sabers. Why, why are you with me? Let's keep things simple. If someone gets in our way, remove them. He might be a useful ally here. I think we want to go... There are a lot of things we can do. We'll talk to Captain Sen. And go to the Golden Way. Be on the lookout for the Scourge of the South. It is your duty as citizens of the Empire to report anyone who matches this description. Keep an eye out for a strange looking man in priestly robes. Reports suggest he is well over seven feet tall and fully armed. This man is very dangerous. Do not try to apprehend the Scourge of the South, but instead report what you've seen to the authorities immediately. So, they have a name for you now. At least they didn't get your appearance right. Maybe we should find out exactly what they know. Maybe someone other than me should do the talking, but... Oh no, you weird nap! The Scourge of the South has destroyed whole villages in the South. Many innocents have suffered at the hand... Out of sheer spite, the Scourge flooded ancient ruins, wantingly destroying our very own heritage.
the... Greetings, citizen. Imperial Captain Sen at your service. Are you one of the mercenaries come to help me track down some criminal scum? I might be. If you are who I'm waiting for, you have some explaining to do. Admittedly, you don't resemble the ones described to me, but they're several days late. No doubt they'll blame it on the foolish ghost stories. What criminals do you need help with? Criminals with lucrative bounties on their heads. I need help tracking down a pair of criminals. Are you interested in a little well-paying work? Just tell me what needs to be done. These two scoundrels have eluded my best efforts, so I'm turning to bounty hunters. It's harder to run when your pursuers are not in a uniform. While the silver's appealing, do we really have time to waste on this? Yes. I'm searching for an arsonist and a notorious confidence man. Find and eliminate either one, and there's a standard bounty in it for you. A wise decision. The two criminals are Fading Moon and Creative Yukong. Fading Moon is an arsonist who was last spotted heading for the necropolis. Creative Yukong has virtually disappeared, though we may be able to learn something from Lady Rento, the wife of the man Yukong bilked. She's in the Imperial Arena. What tell me about Fading Moon? Fading Moon is an arsonist. Her first fires were in the poor quarters, but her last one spread to the Market District Gate. Last we heard, she had escaped to the necropolis. Did I see the scene of the crime? The gates between here and the poorer districts will be closed for some time while repairs are underway. There's nothing particular about the scene of the crime, just ash. And why was nothing done to catch her? Well, as I said, she confined them to the poor districts. She would have been impossible to catch in that rat's nest. More frankly, there isn't enough money to make it worth my effort. What about creating Yukon? Yukon fleeced some silver from Lord Rento, a powerful man in the Ministry of Harmony. Yukon is a master of disguise, and he has hidden himself somewhere in the city. Lord Rento is away on court business, but his wife informed me that she'd be in the heart of the Empire in the Imperial Arena if we needed her. You could start there. What can she tell me? She knows the details of the theft better than I. Lord Rento was reluctant to discuss them. Yukon could be anywhere or anyone, and Lady Rento is the only lead we have. Right you are. Remember to keep an eye out for anyone suspicious. The Scourge associates with nefarious fox spirits, aiding the... I am not comfortable here. Mm. Ah, you have to golden away. Ministry Hostel. Bigger song. I greet you, sir. I wonder if you might have some silver to spare. Your clothes are expensive and you speak like a noble. 
I come from a very wealthy family. As such, I have a certain lifestyle to maintain. Parties, female admirers, lots of wine. You understand. Mm, that doesn't explain why you're begging. I have to have an income, don't I? My father looked at my considerable expenses and told me to get my own silver. Uh, do you have ever consider getting a job? Ah, but I am a noble. The shame of manual labor or the stink of trade must not be allowed to touch me. There's no shame in begging? How could there be shame? You've got it and I want it. Should I steal it? Never. Simply ask like a civilized soul, I say. I'll give you a silver if you'll explain this philosophy of yours. I am afraid I cannot do that. That would be trade, and I simply will not sully my beautifully soft hands with such. I will tell you for free, however. Fine. I read all the greatest philosophers and consulted with wise men before reaching this decision. I assure you the philosophical underpinnings are quite sound. Wisdom is only gained by experience, wine, women, and song, as it were. But a life of revel with no reflection still does not lead to true wisdom. One must ponder, one must daydream. Even if I could bear the shame of sullying my hands with work, when would I think? How could I grow wise? So, you are begging in order to pay for drunkard and debauchery, all in service of becoming truly wise. Well, it loses some of the subtlety when you put it that way, but yes. Yeah, the pursuit of wisdom is noble. Have your silver. I thank you. It's not easy for one such as I. I have it far more difficult than the impoverished beggars of this city. Farewell. Your parentage is below average, and your ancestry is of questionable worth. You dress yourself in the manner of a common laborer. Nobody's paying any attention. Keep trying, just as I instructed. Your physique seems exceptional. Clearly you are a peasant. A noble could afford sloth. What are you doing? Why attempt to insult me? Your breath is like the wind of an ox. Your last meal was of suspect quality. Ask for an explanation. Your beliefs are superficial and your culture is substandard. There's no point to your insults. Bend your claims or cease this instant. You are right to demand an explanation. Forgive my servant. I instructed him to find someone not distracted by mere insults. Someone who would command respect. Your demand for justification of his arguments was admirable. You are exactly what we need. Explain yourself. An outlander strolled into the city several days ago and now sits like a cormorant taking what he wants from the river of our hospitality. He balks at our attempts to calm him and answers requests for payment with strange coins of questionable value. He needs to go. Why is he so different? The Outlander is not a dignitary or traveling merchant. He is a parody of civilized behavior. He spews insults at the Emperor himself. So far, he has escaped the notice of any higher officials. Perhaps he was mistaken for an actor in a troupe. But that will not last. If he is reported, the Lotus Assassins will take notice. They'll want to know if he was harbored or his offense was encouraged. 
Guilt by association is enough for them. Mm. Perhaps I can reason with him. That's what's so infuriating. He doesn't respond to reason. He proposes challenges we don't understand, and then declares himself the winner. Several of our brightest have faced him, but as soon as they get the better of him, he sets off his strange firework and says they are beaten. Normally, the peasants like it when we intellectuals are maligned, but they tire of his presence too. Getting rid of this nuisance will endear you to many. Mm. I'll teach him not to mock our culture. I hope your ability matches your conviction. Several others have fallen short, despite their outrage at his antics. He is in the scholar's garden, and no amount of opposition has moved him. Please, I hope you will prove to be a worthy opponent. Music and the other arts are vital parts of life in the Jade Empire. As with any truly civilized people, even the common man can enjoy the benefits of music in his daily life. Only the music of the Jade Empire itself truly satiates this primal urge. The lesser, more savage peoples that surround us know nothing of true culture, and their primitive beatings and wailings cannot touch the soul as truly as have the masterpieces of Water Swallow or the heart-wrenching tragedy of Falling Star. For this reason, if not others, it is our duty as a cultured people to bring civilization and joy of the arts to those less advanced and gifted societies. Good day, citizen. Some minor thing I can help you with? You'll only help me with minor things? It's the honorable Lotus Assassins, you see. They feel that those of us dedicated to the Imperial Army are nothing more than louts to be ordered about. Any member of the Army, even City Guard, is expected to defer any major disturbances to them. Makes me about as useful as a lamppost. Be about your the golden way. Some kind of play. I didn't expect you in your strange training to make it to the Imperial City. You are proving to be a very interesting person. Of course I could tell that just by looking at you. You have a very strong presence. Hmm. You've changed again, Princess. Who are you now? As the Heavenly Lily, I am above suspicion, but I am restrained by fawning servants. Silk Fox can go anywhere, and people are not shy about their reactions. There is a thrill, of course, and it allows me to find information useful to us both. Death's Hand brought your master Lee to the palace a few days ago. I saw the flyer. He was bound in chains. He must be powerful, or you are. 
there was something familiar about him as well. He's familiar because you are related. He's Sun Li. Why would you say that? Is that what he told you? I'm sorry, but I simply cannot believe that your Master Li is the glorious strategist. It doesn't matter what you believe. I know it, and that's enough. Sun Li died 20 years ago. Everyone was told that he and Prince Kin, the third brother, fell defending the Empire. Now, it seems they may have been traitors. I discovered this looking through records for information on Death's Hand. Perhaps he tried to influence Sun Li and Sun Kin before corrupting my father. But it doesn't matter who your master is. I could take you to the palace, but Death's Hand controls what my father hears. He must be discredited for you to succeed. What do I need to do? Death's Hand has almost total control over my father. We must find conclusive evidence of his crimes and reveal his corruption. And I know how. Construction on the wall has stopped for the first time in generations. The workers now toil in factories building powerful creatures of stone and clay called golems. Death's Hand could use these automatons to seize the Empire and my father is oblivious. We must infiltrate the Lotus Assassins and find evidence of this treachery. Hmm. A golem factory like you described can't be small, but if we just identified it... My father may have approved the factory without considering what it could be used for. If we just tell him my suspicions, he will dismiss them. We need proof of Death's Hand's intent from the seat of his power, the Lotus Assassin Fortress. It would be impossible to assault, so just walk in. They are recruiting. I fought a number of them. I would be spotted. Have any Lotus Assassins who saw your face live to report back? I doubt it. They will not recognize you as the person who fought them in Tien's Landing. They have a vague description full of guesswork that has guards holding people at random. Besides, they expect an attack, not someone trying to catch their eye. I would wager that you may profit from their tasks too. Can you see the beauty in using their own methods of recruitment to fight them? I think they deserve it. How can this be done? There are guilds within the Lotus Assassins. Executioners look for fearsome warriors. Inquisitors are more subversive, and they look for cunning in their agents. If you prove yourself in the arena, they will notice you. My people can spread rumors of your interest. The Executioner will take a real interest when you finish the Silver Round. Or if you prefer, the Inquisitor Recruiter is also seeking new people. He might be open to persuasion. You know a lot about the Lotus Assassins. Why? Death's Hand rules over the Lotus Assassins, so I take special interest in their activities. I've had most of my life to ask questions. You suspect my motives? You have no reason to doubt me. If I wanted the Lotus Assassins to find you, I could simply tell them your name. That doesn't... Ah, just because I doubt you doesn't mean I believe you working for the Lotus Assassins. Just that you have your own motivations for doing things. Uh, hmm. I will go see what I can learn in the Imperial Arena. Yes, I will have my people spread rumors of your interest. Once you pass the Silver Round, the Executioner will take an interest. I'm sure he will find you as impressive as I do. Or, if you prefer, court the Inquisitor. Ask Scholar Dong Gao in the Scholar's Garden about him. I hear Dong Gao is closer to the Assassins than he should be. I will wait at your flyer. Or, I could travel with you. Before you get too lost, perhaps we should, uh, discuss how closely we will be working together? Yeah, sure. Zoo can go wait, liar. A wise preference. No offense intended to your amusing companions.
Okay, what can you do? Still missing two. Attack longsword support. You deal extra damage with martial styles. Hmm. Not bad at all. But again, this is um, you. You can't do this. These vague things. <sighs> yeah, it, you do extra damage. How much? You have. If I take uh, any martial arts skill, there are clear percentages. Why not just men mention how much extra damage you can do with my martial arts styles? It's sort of same here. Duration increase. Slight, small, moderate, large, drastic. Why have that when you when you have the five percent, ten percent, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five? That's so much better that you you can make a decision, clear decision. Is the benefit worth the cost for you? Here, what the fuck is between a s difference between a slight and a small and a moderate? How about a large? How is drastic? Is it what? 33% can be drastic. It could be 50%, 100% extra duration. What? What the, what the fuck is drastic compared to a slight? Numbers, people. Hmm. Well, we should talk to them. Talk to her. Hello again. I enjoy our little chats, but I don't think anything has changed since we last spoke. I still need evidence against Death's hand to free my father. Meet the executioner in the arena, or speak with Scholar Dungao in the. I want to ask more about this evidence that you want. We've gone over this. Death's Hand is using the prisoners who should be working on the wall to construct some sort of personal army of golems. Yeah. My father probably knows something, but not the true danger of it. I need to show that Death's Hand intends to seize control. The Lotus Assassins act for Death's Hand. There has to be proof of his evil intent in the Lotus Assassin Fortress. That is where you need to go. Is he going to have some kind of a written evidence of that? Maybe a journal? Why has your servant given me a gift? Did you like it? I thought you might want a little assistance. Consider it a small token of my favor. I appreciate the gift. I thank you for your courtesy. A woman always likes to hear when her gifts are appreciated. It is difficult for one of my rank to give gifts, even one so simple as what I gave you. A princess is not normally allowed to show favorites. Why did you take the risk? Better that I give it away before Death's hand carts it off. He has been quite brazen. Besides, it was mine by birthright to do with as I wish. Must I always be dictated to by tradition, despite my respect for it? Sometimes I want what everyone else has, to be myself. And to be myself, I gave you what I wished. I thank you for the gift and the risk you took giving it. Hmm. <laughs> well, you're polite at least. Most nobles take gifts as a matter of course, especially those from a woman. But the price I may pay for helping you could be greater still. I am destined for the throne, destined to rule the Empire after my father, but... That will be meaningless if Death's Hand keeps his hold on my father's mind. I fear one day he may try to... 
interfere with the Imperial succession. Or perhaps convince my father that he should be emperor by marriage. So survival is uh, probably a significant motivator for her, which is just fine. Yeah, we can't allow such travesty to happen. Uh, your flower would only wither under such harsh conditions. Uh, I, I don't think I can say that with a straight face. Indeed, we cannot. I would bite my own tongue before ever allowing that man to touch me. I'm sorry, I've ruined the mood. We should continue our talk another time. First, we must expose Death's hand, reveal his treachery and manipulation. I will answer. Mm. What about the Emperor? My father? What do you want to know that isn't already public knowledge? Emperor Sun Hai is well known and well loved. Death's hand is wearing away at that reputation, however, and I need to stop him before it goes too far. I might have to kill her father or do something else to her in when did Death's hand join your father's court? He has been present for as long as I can remember, but he only rose to prominence after the end of the long drought. What was your father like before this began? My father was very caring when I was a child. Now he is cold and distant. I know Death's hand is corrupting him somehow. I will answer. Death's hand. I wish you luck. Once you have gained the trust of the Lotus Assassins. It looks like it's going to take quite some time to get anything going on here. It's a huge amount of uh, areas and people to talk to. Physical Universe, a rebuttal. Scholar Xiao Xiang has once again missed the central point of the philosopher's argument. We do not wish to stall development, nor do we seek to stop people from learning. Philosophers see the work of the divine in the physical world and oppose those who defy tradition only because they find those customs inconvenient or outdated. Learning and respect for the past need not be mutually exclusive. We seek only to learn in a way that does not dishonor the celestial beings that gave us our very lives. Well, look who we have here. There's no princess to save you this time. Do you think we'd forget? You can't humiliate us and just walk away. Don't look at me. I can't do anything right now. Not like this. We'll teach you to insult a guard of the Imperial City. Legendary strike. <laughs> Configuration of the snake. Um, okay.
We found this academic leaflet and we kept it. The crux of the argument reads, to think that any machine could be designed around the principles of starting motion with a tiger, of all things, is to dally with utter madness. As if this were not enough, no machine made by the hands of man can be fueled by iron infused with nickel. The resulting metal while strong is inert to reactions. Even application of electrical current and the introduction of chimney smoke into a mechanical cauldron as proposed produce no appreciable result. Tiger feeds on the stone of the cow. Welcome, friend. The lecture won't be starting for a little while, though your enthusiasm is appreciated. I wouldn't worry about seating. Those interfering philosophers had made sure that very few people will be attending the lecture. Mm. Questions? Certainly. We can't learn without asking questions. How can I help you today? Mm. Why do you mistrust philosophers? Don't get me wrong, I like most of the philosophers, but their strict adherence to aging traditions makes them very difficult to deal with. They're always preaching about peace and harmony. Really, we kill and subdue the creatures of this world in order that we can survive. Where's the peace in that? Can a man survive long enough without eating meat? What about the grains we use to make our bread, or the hides we use for any number of things? We consume constantly. Peace and harmony are wonderful ideals, but in nature only the strong survive, and they don't do it by being peaceful. What is the lecture about? I'm glad you asked. Today I will speak on my theories of cloud formation. That was my first major discovery, though it hasn't been widely accepted yet. The basic principles are really quite simple. I deduced after lengthy study that clouds are formed by the moisture escaping from our bodies. When the weather is cool, you can clearly see small clouds escaping from people's mouths. Similar clouds form on the skin of people working strenuously in the cold. These clouds of breath rise up and collect near the tallest peaks, where it is almost always cloudy. This was one of my finest discoveries. Right. <sighs> Tell me about Scholar's Garden. Um. Uh, I, I don't really agree with his uh, assessment about peace and harmony or his objection to it because he's using nature as an example and the one thing you are is while it's a part of it you are living in a civilization you are living civilized lives according to the rules and customs and they are very old the opposite things of nature. You're limiting what your natural impulses and things like that. You're controlling them. You're limiting them because they don't really correspond too well with living in a society or civilization. So, yeah, you have to. You can't exactly be at peace and harmony with everything. Or it depends on how you interpret that. But you, you can't just do the survival of the fittest crap. Or, or go to the, the natural way is the correct way to do things. The natural way is bullshit. Natural way doesn't really support civilization or large societies. Natural way screws the screws people over so badly. 
Well, at the same time, there are natural large colonies, but they're usually found for insects. So, but if you take it that way, natural is whatever it is. Everything is natural. Humans are natural too. But uh, but at that point, uh, there's really no point between calling anything natural if it encompasses everything. Oh, so soon. All right then. I hope to see you again soon. Perhaps I could explain to you my theories on the formation of ice crystals. Ah, I really don't think you did. Focusing one's thoughts requires balance. Living without balance weakens the mind. Scholar's hypothesis. The to suggest that I, of all people, do not understand the significance or importance of the celestial beings is preposterous. I pay my tributes at the temple because I honor those who gave us our minds and our curiosity. Philosopher Zhang ignores the crux of the problem by hiding behind his argument of divine belief. Scholars have made some recent discoveries such as the way in which clouds are formed. But the philosophers, led by Zhang, dismiss these theories without even hearing them out. How can we progress as a society if we refuse to accept new ideas and new concepts? Philosophers would have us cling to our traditions, even at the cost of our own prosperity. Yeah, I don't. I, I have no idea what philosophers means in this society. But usually it's uh, um, if you have all your different sciences, the uh, philosophers would be basically at the root of all those. Um, if you have physics, a uh, philosophy would be quite often in in that arena. How do you do physics? Really, it would be about the methods, uh, how limit of uh, information. How, how, what can you perceive or gather information about the uh, about the universe? A nature about some things that you can't really put a number on it. Or what's the correct methodology, the best way to gather new information, or what what limits such things have, or something like that. The fundamentals, not the actual, nothing, very little to do with the actual gathering results or doing tests, but the fundamentals where the entire science or physics space is based on. The fundamental assumptions that you sort of take for granted. Uh, if you actually do some kind of uh, more practical work. Here it seems like they've decided that instead of uh, being a basis of actual science and new discoveries, they're sort of uh, deciding what can be uh, so they're deciding beforehand what the results can be, what can be searched. It was sort of like, more like a, what uh, I guess religion would be. I mean, certain uh, certain results are, are simply, or, or according to religion, world world works in a certain way. So you can't have scientific discovery or empirical evidence that contradicts that. It, it's just dismissed out of hand. When it should work is you figure, find out as much as you can and according to your new information and beliefs you adjust your philosophies to um, try to work, incorporate all that new information and work to improve things. Uh, the difference would be easy to highlight, like uh, compared uh, medical knowledge now compared to some kind of uh, ancient Greece where they were 
uh, I think what was it human some kind of a uh, there were some forms of elements that determined uh, how uh, everything is they incorporate certain elements and certain type of slimes or bile that uh, sort of basically explains how a human body works for example so in similar manner a uh, philosophy that's created in an ancient time where that that bile system was an element was the basis of your understanding i mean how people really believe how things were you, you you can't just a modern philosophy would be based on modern knowledge so it also would by necessity incorporate new ideas and ways of thinking that would totally be impossible by the uh, in the ancient world at the same time it's it's unfair to sort of look at philosophers only from uh, some kind of a ancient a antique world and sort of a look at that's what philosophy is because you have to it's like looking at today's medicines uh, medicine and say it's it's all about elements and bile that's that's how they explain things the basic of that's what i mean the philosophy will all be always be rooted by the general other understanding you have and science of the time so it will reflect that an ancient philosophy will have the limits of ancient knowledge that people had it will not translate perfectly in any way to modern life modern understanding The physical universe, a final world. The world that we live in is not as simplistic as philosopher Jean would suggest in his treatise on the physical universe. His hypothesis regarding divine regulation of weather and seasons, though interesting, is nothing more than children's tales made overly complicated. Recent research, led by scholar Dungal, has proven that our seasons and weather are much more than the careless whims of distant celestial beings. Our universe is made up of very real, very tangible components that can be carefully quantified and qualified. Yeah, so in this system, the philosopher's position seems to be more like a religion position. They explain how the world is. They have a system of belief and that's what they use. So they dismiss what people have discovered based on because it doesn't coincide with what they believe. The guy Scholar Danga is wrong. But that's besides the point. That's not the problem. Long Drought The Long Drought stands as one of the worst periods of the Jade Empire's recent history. Ten years of scorching heat and little rainfall took their toll on even the prodigious reserves. Yeah, we've read this before. As a European, <laughs> Tribal. as amusing as your savage dances are, once again I have proven the superiority of setting your nose to the grindstone and not mucking about. Now bring some refreshments in a proper mug. Or I'll take back the coins of my home and country. Don't you heathens know the worth of a proper king's hatenu? Uh, generous visitor, if our customs are so displeasing to you, perhaps you should find lodging elsewhere? Please? And leave you lot to your primitive ways? 
Tell them what I think of that, Squire Percival. Sir Roderick Ponce von Fontelbottom, the magnificent bastard, will do no such thing. He means to educate you all. Good lad. Found him waiting in the mud, planting weeds. You can't keep your crackers crisp doing that. God help you if you don't know the horror of a soggy biscuit. I've given him dignity, and unless one of you has the will to deny that I'm your better, I suggest you start learning. We'll have you in proper trousers by the morrow. I might be mistaken, but that sounds awfully like, like John Cleese. The fact that he has a cheese and a fork uh, as an emblem on his breastplate makes me think that's probably the case. Um, Sir, your arrogance is astounding. We are a cultured people. Oh, what's that? Someone stepping to the fore? Let's have a look at you. Ah, you look quick with your fists, but I'll wager your head falls behind. Too much time slapping each other, and not enough time strapped to a desk in a decent classroom. The simple truth is that I have bested every one of you who has come forward, whether in tests of wit or combat. You faced a champion of king and country. Now, I didn't ask to land here, but if a storm is going to cast my ship into the very heart of such a dark empire, I'll bring the light of knowledge wherever I can. You must hunger for guidance. You're like children. I mean, only a handful of you can even grow a decent moustache. What kind of place is this? Mm. You blind yourself with prejudice. I can prove you wrong. Can you now? Shall we put that to a test? I welcome the chance that you might impress me with a glimmer of intelligent insight. But I will acknowledge that I am likely to disagree just because I know you are, uh, lacking. We will need educated men to judge the merits of our arguments. Some sort of debate here. Uh, we shouldn't try to fight first. Uh, what kind of contest are you looking for? I've gone to great pains to learn your barbaric tongue, only to find that none of you has much to say. Can you convince me otherwise? I've heard a distinct lack of couplets and quatrains to say nothing of pentameters. Is it any wonder you people live as you do? I charge you with defending the heart of your people. If a group of judges determines that you have adequately done so, I will declare you the winner. Ah, oh, shit, I'm not that good at this. Might as well go with it, just to hear what he has to say. So, who shall judge? Um, whoever you wish. These five, standing here. I'm sure there will be a balance of opinion. The test must be fair. Go on, talk to them all to prove I haven't coerced them. We'll begin the debate when you're ready. Then we'll see how you fare in combat. Doubt you'll do very well. Like the rest, you're all just too damn skinny. I heard you accept the Outlander's challenge. I'm grateful you have seen fit to defend us all. I would be honored to sit in judgment of the debate. Several of my fellow scholars have also volunteered. I trust you will just fairly. To do otherwise would only help the Outlander win in the long run. If he wants a true debate, we will allow it to progress fairly. Of course, I doubt his arguments will have the weight that he expects. Not here in the heart of the Jade Empire. What kind of arguments do you favor? I am ill equipped to see my own faults, but I, like my fellow scholars, am adept at exploiting the weaknesses of others. 
Scholars Heng and Zhao are easily swayed with simple facts. Cite such details and they are certain to change their opinion either for or against. Any suggestions on strategy? The best course is to appeal to the individual preferences of the judges. We are theoretical thinkers, really. It is not so much the subject, but the tactic that triggers reaction. Each judge will respond only to argument styles they favor. If a judge likes fact, use it once and he will join your side. Use it again and he will switch back just to further debate. Other arguments may not interest him at all. Yeah, that doesn't make at all any sense. That's the most retarded. This is a switch puzzle. Ugh, fuck you, game. I, I don't, I don't want to. I'll just half-ass it. Don't care well, about the results. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Change. I just want to make sure that this is more entertaining than simply blathering about whose walls are higher or whose philosophers really know what's what. It will be a simple matter. Five judges, six topics. I'll pose my argument about why your foolish land stumbles like a child, and you try to answer. Yeah, let's do it. The judges will raise their arms to indicate whom they favor. Arms up for you, arms down for me. After six topics, if you have a majority, you are the winner. By the Queen's corset, if you get them all on your side at any time, I'll declare the match over. Now, shall we proceed? Hmm, sure. I will pull no punches, and I expect no mercy on your part. Let's see which of us is truly superior. Well, what shall be my first point of contention? I know the most basic of concerns for a culture, the currency of its economy. What manner of society would use the silver coin as the basis of trade? Gold is clearly superior, which you admit by using it for important statuary. Your understanding of what determines value is flawed. Your rebuttal? Uh, attitude. Scarcity proves gold should be reserved for higher purposes. Well, you are clearly in the minority, but I can spare no quarter. To the next topic! I call attention to the arrogance of your empire. You simply assume that all lands outside your borders are the domain of barbarians and monsters. How can you truly know they are uncivilized until you've proven it by conquest? Crush them beneath your heel. You sit here thinking while far-off lands yearn for direction, not unlike what I am attempting with you. Hmm. Not wish to impose ourselves on others. I have no idea what to pick here. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. Shall I draw attention to your foolish reliance on personal combat? You've got strange dragon powder arms, but you waste them on spectacle and flying chariots. Any decently civilized people would have developed a proper array of personal sidearms by now, like old Mirabel here. Mm.
You're obviously hiding your lack of ability elsewhere. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. I challenge your foolish beliefs and the irrational behaviors they produce. Dragons, spirits, and even talk of unresting dead. Puh. Just look at the collective foolishness that you call a floating palace. The constant superstitious yammering of your peasants even has me seeing it. And how the bloody hell would you get a moat up there? It's ridiculous, I say. Hmm. Yeah, mucking. You're debating your own eyes. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. I say that you don't seem to understand the relationship between the ruling class and the peasantry. Your commoners are far too happy to be productive. A proper spiral of misery shows that they are doing a decent day's work. Your peasants only suffer because of foolish superstitions about the dead walking around. Hmm. This topic is as relevant as the, as the peasants you speak of. What? My monocle must be fond. I can't see anyone in my favor. It appears they've reached a consensus against you, Sir Roderick. <laughs> Hmm. Clearly these people are incapable of fairly comparing one of their own to an outsider. This is a farce. <laughs> you decided the rules. We have acted fairly. Then perhaps it was my mistake to think you would be open to anything other than your own backwards ideals. Puh! I seek satisfaction. You have bested me in debates, but true honor is decided on the dueling field. Mm. If that is your wish, I will meet you in combat. The entry hall here has walls to be up against, corners to be backed into, and floor enough on which to be down but not out. Whatever your metaphor, I'll beat it. Return to me when you are ready, and we will walk there together, just to ensure that no one gets lost or suffers an accident that would prevent a fair fight. Frankly, I don't know what you people are capable of. Ah. Quickly now, Sir Roderick Ponce von Fontelbottom, the magnificent bastard, is not one to let a duel grow stale on the vine. <laughs> Ah, th Let's go. What? Good. Let's get this over with so I can return to schooling the rest of your fellows. I envy you. You are about to experience for the first time the skill that has forged an empire and traveled the world. There will be pain as well, but I imagine it will be almost worth it. It's not kidding about <laughs> What the fuck just happened? Oh, I, I lost. Why am I constantly looking at you, you piece of shit? Yeah. Your concept of honor is outdated too. 
Finish a dog when he's down. Possible? A towel. Every time I try to fight with the target system, it always fails miserably. You can't dodge really when it's uh, it's there. You're because you move much more slowly because you just straight. You don't run forward, and you constantly have a terrible, ex excellent line of sight to your target. Yep. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Even worse. How can I disrupt the bastard? Possible? A towel! I guess it requires much more accurate timing to actually evade strike. Maybe we should try some other uh, combat style. Legendary, legendary strike. You're in. Yeah, there's no way to. Nothing interrupts it, and ooh, can I block? Uh, I forgot that you can block in this game. I wonder, can you block uh, rifle shots though? Yeah, I, I use blocking so infrequently, I, I didn't even think about the fact that you can block. So, blocking will not work. It's all a matter of just pushing enough damage, I guess. Possible? A towel! I think one of the magical uh, disciplines might work well here, because they can disrupt his activities constantly. <laughs> Stone and more. Two shots and we're down. <laughs> I'm surprised this is going to be the tough fight for me. I uh, just don't know how to disrupt the bastard. A towel. Correct timed evading seems to be the only choice. Stone and more. Return to the heavens.
That was a, a, a fine display of skill. It was a fair fight, Sir Roderick. Uh, w within the rules you specified. Yes, old boy, you've got it right. I was really sat down, I believe. Like the fall of the old bridge across the Grand. My humors are in disarray, I tell you. I suppose I should have seen it coming. Your win in the debate was a sure sign. I do believe I have underestimated the lot of you. Regardless, you have beaten me. That's a point of honor I cannot deny. It was not your day. Well, there's no other thing for it. Intended or not, you've earned a reward from me. The unsuccessful combatant in a duel must arrange a worthy gift for the victor. I wouldn't be much of an ambassador for my country if I didn't abide by its customs. The Duchess of Almsbottom's rules of engagement are quite clear on this matter. I don't want his weapon. Mine, spirit, strength, gems. I'm concerned with spiritual matters. You lot are always on about your spirit. Well, we have a saying. To balance the soul, equalize pressure. I will share knowledge of trepanation. The skull is the soul's prison. Drill to set it free. Not too deep, mind you. If there's more on the boar than in the skull, you'll cut your vocabulary in short order. Right, Percival, fluff my traveling trousers. We will darken this garden no more. Manual of preparation. Spread plus three. Fifty two. Mm -hmm. Ah, double up. Twenty. Um. More body. And then more spirits. Twenty-three style points. Uh -huh. <sighs> A well-fought victory against that outlander buffoon. You showed that he could not best us in battle, mentally or physically. We are all in your debt, but the Ministry of Culture is particularly so. Please take this token sum of silver as payment. You certainly earned it. Mm. That will suffice. It was an honor to defend the Empire. Your service is appreciated. If only there were more like you in the Empire. Hmm. 